But um, bum, bum. Windy pig, windy pig, oh, windy, 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 windy pig. All right, dudes, welcome back to my house, my garag. Um, been a while since I've done anything on any of the bikes. Well, it's not quite true, but been a while since I've done anything worth filming on the bikes. Um, but as it's a summer and the uh, triple can go back on the road for most journeys, decided it's time that the uh, 550 that was run all over winter gets a bit of love. When I first put it back on the road oh, nearly two years ago now, I did check the valve clearances and they were tight. I thought, well, I'm running till I. Uh, Got something else I'm using regularly and then put it back on the garage side and do the valves then. So well, they weren't like out of spec. I, I can't remember exactly. Did I keep the bit of paper? Uh, no, that's that. No, obviously not. I thought I'd kept a bit of paper with the valve measurements on it. Let me see if I can find it. It'd be interesting to know what they were then and what they are now. And it looked like I fucking binned it. But I know they weren't they weren't out of spec. I mean I think maybe one or two were out of spec, but only just. Um But valves is an easy job. I mean it's one of those things that people don't want to do or think it's expensive or think it's really hard. So to prove to you how easy it is, we're gonna do it today on a sunny Sunday afternoon. I'm gonna do it while we're drinking. So you can see it's easy and can be done on your half cut. Um the three bits of information you need before you start is you need to know what the measurements should be. So for me, it's uh, 0.15 to 0.25 on the exhaust side and intakes 0.1 to 0.2. Uh, you'll need to know what the clearance is currently, which we're going to measure. You'll need to know what the size of the shim is, which we'll measure. And then for those three bits of information, we can decide what new shims to put in, if any at all. Or sometimes you're lucky, you can swap shims about. So if you've got one that's a bit, you know, you can take shims out the intake side, but the exhaust side, save a bit of money buying shims. You'll need a set of feeler gauges um, because you need to measure clearances. Only way to do it, and you will need a magnet on a stick, and you'll need plenty of rag, just because there's ports and things you want to block up to stop yourself dropping anything small and fiddly into anywhere that it might cause problems. Um, but yeah, so for the 550, I'm also lucky. It's only eight valves. Most modern bikes be 16, so you've got to do all this, you know. 16 times, well, than just eight. <laughs> You've got to buy 16 different sets of valve shims. If you're unlucky to buy, you have to buy all 16. Happened to me with the ZZR. I had I did the valve clearances when it came to me and every single shim wanted to change in. And, well, I think I could have got away one or two, but once you once you buy 14 shims, you might as well buy 16 shims. Um, but you sometimes you get lucky, you can swap intake side to exhaust side shims and stuff with they, uh, as long as they take your inside your tolerances. But yeah, so, I've done a bit of the beginning, a bit of the bike already. Just stripped down, took the tank off, uh, taken the basically anything I need to take off to get to the next bit, which is so bike specific. It's not me really worth sitting there, you watching me go through that. For this bike and for most bikes, it usually would be tank off. Um, sometimes, depending on the angle of the engine and the axis you've got around the frame, it might be carbs or. Um, Throttle bodies off, might be the airbox off. Usually, something like you have to get a bit of electric out of the way. So, for me, I had to get all the um, coils out of the way uh, to get access. Um, but yeah, it'll be obvious as we go through what you know. What, you can get yourself to this point through your manual, um, and from there, I'll show you the rest. So, yeah, let's go and uh, get on the bike. So, like I said, um, I've already got a fair bit of the bike stripped down, seats come off, uh, tanks off, uh, both coils are off and they are labelled up and put to one side. Stuck them under, where have I stuck those actually? <laughs> Fuck knows where I put those. It's going to be interesting, we're going to find them. Well, can't be nowhere. Um, just got to get this wiring out of the way a little bit because this is all the wiring for the coils. I'm just going to drop it around here so it's out of the way. And... The other thing to do, sensibly, is just take the spark plugs out. Again, I loosened them off earlier on. So you don't have to watch me just unscrew those spark plugs. And that is just because 
and we're going to be turning the engine over to check the valve clearances. So with the spark plugs out, the compression's at a bit lower. Uh, well, much, much lower. So these all look pretty good, actually. I was expecting these to be covered in shit and oil, because it does burn a bit of oil, but actually these look quite nice. So I think they only burn oil. I think my suspicions about this bike correct. And when I first got it, 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 it really fucking drank oil, like bilio. Um, I really think it's running a bit lean, look. Interesting. But, um, yeah, when I first got it, it, it drank oil like nothing else. Um, it used to fucking just spew blue smoke out of it, and I thought, oh, fucking here we go, top end at least. Um, but I also thought to myself, yeah, that one's pretty sooty. So there's a bit of oil in there, but nothing major. Stick them to one side. Oh, there's all this stuff on the bike up there. Found it. Right, so I'll put with that. Um... And I, on advice of someone else who had one of these and, and had these in the old days, said, "Look, it's been sat for 15 years. The good chance it's just the uh, rings are just a bit sticky. Just thrash it for a couple of months, see what happens." And uh, cheers. And uh, it still burns a bit of oil, much less than it did. So um, I think the problem now lies in that it's probably got. The valve stem oil seals, top end, uh, I'll let him buy. And uh, that's it now, I think, which is fine. I can live with that. Um, basically, just means it just drips a bit of oil down into the bores as it's uh, from the from the, from the the valve cover up here, slips down the side of the valve, and that's it. Anyway, I also already loosened all these off, um, because again, it's boring to watch a man. Loosen bolts, and there'll be an order for this. So if you, when you're doing this, because these valve covers are thin aluminium, because they go through some of the heat cycles, um, what can happen is they can twist and they can warp. And if they're not torqued down correctly, or there's other things that happen with bad gaskets and stuff, but essentially they are fragile and can bend. So to avoid cracking and things, there is an order in which you're supposed to loosen off and tighten down these valve cover bolts. Now, a decent manual, Haynes or Climber or proper workshop manual, will set the order out for your little book. But if you've got a really old machine, it'll just say crisscross pattern, or it'll say star pattern, or it'll say figure eight pattern or something ridiculous, and you'll have to just fucking figure it out. But best way to do these things is to go I mean like this one is you start from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah and you go one and then the end and then you come back and you do four and this end and you basically just work you know opposite each bolt as you undo them um once they're undone fine like I'm just gonna just just take this one out now but um yeah for loosening and tightening you want to stick to that order just to avoid if one end is sort of slightly bent or warped or slightly, if you do it wrong or the danger I think is, and I don't know exactly what it is, but the danger I think is, or what I'm told the danger is, is that if, say this end wants to sit up a little bit, if you undo all of these first and this end pops up, it can crack along somewhere. So by releasing the pressure evenly over, you know, the whole top of the, or every, you know, evenly across the whole system, you end up with less chance of that happening or warping or cracking. Um, but yeah, same with, but doing up is more important as well. Doing up is just as important. You've got to do up in the right order. And we'll, when we get to that bit, when we put them back together, I'll show you through that. But I'll um, just get these all out. We'll fast forward and start again in a minute. I'll show you what it's off. Is it me you need? I am everything, a master, your pride, your fall from grace oh no oh yeah show me how you breathe when you're... right there's always one really fucking awkward one on these isn't there that's the wrong fucking way you knobhead come on i don't know if you see that in the way but there's always one of these they put in a fucking shit place i could take the uh Igniter out, I'll get this a bit easier, but 
That means taking the igniter out, I can't be honest. Although I can't remember if I have to, actually I might have to take the igniter out. I can't remember if that has to come out to get the valve cover off or not. I suppose we'll find out in a sec. fucking way too many it's not ever way too many it's you have to have that many because the how thin it is how many heat cycles it goes through how easily they warp you've got to have very even pressure across the whole thing so understandably it has lots of bolts and i'm sure i've missed one yet there's one there always do Just double check you haven't missed any when there's fucking ninety thousand of them it's easy to miss right next job is getting this off as you can see it ain't gonna just lift off normally not always. There's dowels and stuff involved where they've got like a, a dowel rotating piece. Um, it's quite common. Sometimes they just get stuck because they're on there so hard. Now, there's two or three ways of doing this, but it all requires you to hit the bike a little bit, in my opinion. Best thing to use is a soft faced hammer, something like a, um, like a cloth mallet or something, or a, one of those composite mallets. Now I haven't got one to hand because of my tools are a lot of my tools at work at the minute and some of you won't have a composite mallet or anything because you don't do this sort of work very often. So the other thing to do is you get a bit of scrap wood and a normal smash a bang hammer. You just want to give it a tap. Never hit anything like this thin with a metal hammer directly. Just you'll just crack it or fuck it. Just give it some taps here and there. It should. If we're lucky, loosen off. There we go, it's coming. There we go, like that. See, a few little taps, but never hit metal with metal. Always have a bit of wood in between, or like I said, use a soft faced mallet of some sort, composite, whatever you want to use. Now, next thing to do is lift this out. Now, I've got a funny feeling I might have to move the wiring loom to get clearance over the cams what do you think i reckon i probably will oh no there she goes that's it lift that out of there magic and there is cams now some will say this looks slack but these engines have got a uh a second tensioner in here so you've got your normal tensioner down the bottom here which tensions the uh, this back end of the of the of the cam chain but these Kawasaki's also have a second tensioner in here. It's not you can't change the setting of it, but it just holds that in. Not sure why uh that is the design on these cut off and that's a taut run across the top of there, but that's how Kawasaki do it, so that's just one thing to be aware of. Now, unluckily, the gas gas hasn't come up in one piece. Um so that's another job for the future is uh cleaning that gasket face. But that's for the future. Hopefully it'll come off in decent chunk because I don't really want to get shit and crap down inside the I mean these gaskets I mean to be fair if you did get some of this gasket down into the uh, into the cams and down into the bottom end of the motor I mean it would cause no real trouble it it'd be chewed up very quickly by anything down there and just end up in your oil filter so it's not the end of the world so what shall I show you next so the next thing to do we got to do the next job is to measure the clearances uh I'm going to hold this camera up here and hopefully to see it better. If you look at each of these cam caps, they're numbered. One, two, three, four. That's important. Eight, seven, six, five. They're not always numbered that clearly, but you do need to make sure when we get to the stage of taking this off, that you keep the cam caps, you know, in the order where they're supposed to be and with the cam they're supposed to be with. What they do is, unlike other bits of the engine where you've got... Um, actual bearings in what they do is they machine the head at cams and camshafts together they, they machine it as one piece almost uh, or machine it all together so they all match up 
so you don't need to worry about having shell bearings in here and um, there'll be an oil clearance uh, an oil feed from the bottom um, but there isn't a, a bearing in there as such you know, the, the, the cap and the and the, and the piece at the, the bottom of the um, inside of the head act as the bearing uh, and where the oil sort of coating is uh, so that's worth knowing it's interesting uh, what else we're going to know about in here uh, next thing we'll do is just to measure the clearances which is the, the bit that is the most important bit is measuring the clearances accurately and the way you do that is difference per engine um, but basically you want to find the distance between the cam lobe here and the bucket in here you need to know the different the distance is different yeah that's spinning nicely this might be easy you know either way you need to know the distance between this cam lobe when it's in neutral position so when it's not pressing down um it's between this cam lobe and the bucket i mean the people call them followers uh, i just call them buckets because they're bucket shaped uh, <laughs> uh yeah so we'll do that next now to do that the book will tell you to set to various positions on the timing marks on the bike which you can do perfectly fine with you doing that um but you just need a neutral position so when like at the minute let's have a look so at the minute number seven so that's number three intake if you look here it's currently being pushed down so that valve's currently been opened slightly but if you look at number one uh number four uh so number four intake and ex exhaust see there they're not being pressed down at all there's, there's there's no pressure on the cams yeah so we'll do it the way they tell you to do it um because i suppose you want me to do it properly um but just so you're aware there is no real need to uh to do it on the timer marks is just a neutral position on those cams so the lobes are you know not at all touching so let's find what size spanner we turn the engine over first it's neither of those two, obviously, because uh, it's the ones I grabbed first. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, it's always the wrong fucking one. Right. So I think if we do... Mark, tire mark one and four, I think, is on the first we start with. That should put cylinder one and four. To neutral, right. That's T14. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Right, so if you look for this bike anyway, timing marks are down here. Timing mark for one and four. So timing mark, firing mark. Um, yeah, that's on there, right? So you line up the mark in the case with the T mark on there for one and four. And then we can look here and we will see that when this camera's pointing at four, but you've got four intake and exhaust fully closed. And the same over here, you've got one and one fully closed so then what you want to do is you want to measure the clearances so you get your feeler gauges and what do we want point uh point one zero point one five in it for these so let's start with the intake so the tightest the intake should be is point one zero so let's find a point one zero feeler gauge there he is and this should if it's not too bad fit in here and that i can't get in there see there's no, there's no way I'm getting that point one. Oh, it's point two five. That's why I'm looking at fucking thousand instead of millimeters. Dickhead. Point one oh millimeters. Point one oh mil. There he is. There he is. What if that bit thick? Thick as me. So yeah, if you get careful, you've got these ones where they've got the Imperial and metric on them. Make sure you're looking at the right like fucking bit of the feeler gauge. So that point one oh won't go in there. So that's too tight, right? So now we've got to find out what it is, what will go in there. It might be zero clearance. I don't think it is because they can spin the... Yeah, the bucket will spin freely, so there's no pressure on the bucket. So it's not going to be quite as low as zero. Let's try a point eight. Hi, all right. What are you after? Huh? What is that? Hmm. Do my leathers if you want while you're at it. <laughs> she's doing the uh horse tack right that point eight goes in there right so the way i was always taught to, to measure these things with these feeder gauges is if you hold the feeder gauge lightly between your thumb and forefinger like this just drag it out that is what you should feel not gripping it at all you're just literally 
it's resting thumb and forefinger between it and there's that little bit of resistance of your skin on the slightly oily um, feeler gauge. So a 0.8 goes in there. Quite nicely, that's about right. And you can just feel a bit of drag as you pull it out. Let's just double check that 0.10 again. I wasn't just being a thicky. Yeah, no chance. We've got a 0.9. I don't think we do. I think it goes in. I think it goes. I think that's as small as we go. I think it goes 4, 6, 8, 10. I think. Yeah, it looks like it. It's a shame. Yeah. So it could be 0, 0.9, but either way, it's best part of you know two tenths of a mil too small so what you first thing you do is you need to get your bit of paper um oh i wish i had the camera up here really but i've it down there um and you need to mark on here so get your bit of paper so we just measured number four intake at 0 0.08 mil right right on there and we just keep going like that we measure we write down so now we've got the exhaust side on four and that should be 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. So let's go to 0 0.15 first. 0 0.25, 0 0.25. What's that one? I've got some of these upside down annoyingly. 0 0.23, 0 0.2, 0 0.13, 0 0.18. Where's 0.15 then? Fuck me. Am I, being, am I, am I missing one? Maybe I'm missing one. There he is. No, I'm just being stupid. Now, again, this is job is one of those jobs that is easier or harder depending on your access. I had a, I had a fire blade once upon a time, and it's in one of those Delta Box frames, or the frames like this instead of one of these tube frames, and the engine's pitched right forward, so this is all pitched like this. And to get a feeler gauge into some of the valves was fucking impossible. Now these feeler gauge, I mean this set of feeler gauges, I think this was 25 quid for a decent set. You can buy feeler gauge sets for cheap. And they are, the cheap ones are accurate enough, considering you're working to within a tolerance range on these valve clearances, that if you've got shit access, there's nothing wrong with buying a cheap set and bending the fuck out of them. So when I did the fire blade, I had a set of these that were bent here. So that I could longer, longer than this, much longer feeler gauges were bent at the tip, so I can get in and get the feeler gauge ends in. It took me a little while to heat them up and bend them successfully, um, but you need to get in there properly, uh, and you need to be able to, you know, you need to feel confident you're getting it right. So we'll do this next one. So I can't get that 0.15 down to that exhaust valve at all. So process again is go smaller. I wish I hadn't put these back the upside down. So it's a 0.15 mil. So we want a 0.13, really. Point 0.13. There it is. 0.13. See, that goes in there. But it's very tight coming out. Too tight for my luck. And let's find... So we should have a point. One, two, maybe, if we're lucky. This gets annoying fast looking for these. Right, so that's a point one three. The next one is point one zero, oh, But we should have a... Oh. So this is where you're clever now, right? So we've had a point one five, didn't go in. Which is there. 0.313 would, would just be too tight. Now, I think it's probably going to be like 0 0.12, 0 0.11. We haven't got a 1112. We've got a 10 and a 13. But what you have got is an 8 uh, or a 6 and a 5. That makes an 11. What else have we got? An 8 and a 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 8 and a 4 is a 12, isn't it? So that's the next one we've got to do. So you combine an 8 and a 4. So 0 0.08 and 0 0.04. That gives you 0 0.12. Quick maths. So we'll combine those two together. That goes in the nice comes again. So that's that. So I said that's 0.04 plus 0.08 is 0.12. 
Right. And this is why I see you need a few rags, because my finger's already really fucking greasy. It's starting to get annoying. Let's get a rag out. It's a dirty old rag. Nice clean rag. Nice clean rag. What did I say? What's point one two? 0.12. Right. So first two valves measure the body out spec. We're gonna we're gonna and we, all you're doing is the same thing all the way down. So we're just gonna do this. So if you had eight valves, you'd have two intake and two exhaust on each side. So instead of having one measurement for each valve, you'd have or two, well you'd have one measurement for each valve, but for instead of having one measurement for each cylinder, or rather having two measurements for each cylinder, you'd have four per cylinder. Here we've got two per cylinder because it's fucking old and fucking shit. Um So hopefully, I don't know how well this camera's capturing stuff, it doesn't tell me what I can see, but we'll, keep, we'll, we'll march on. <coughs> so next intake valve should be 0.10. Let's find a 0.10. There it is. And this time we're going on this side. It goes in there easy peasy. Hmm. Interesting. This one might be in spec, to be fair, by the look of it. Yeah, I can get that 0.10 in there, so let's get a slightly bigger one in. Try 0.15, it's probably going a bit big, but we'll try 0.15 and see if that goes in. That 0.15 just fits. That seems to be in spec. Uh, have we got 0.16? Probably not, probably have to add two together for this. Next one is 0.18. So how do we make 16? 15, 16 and 17, we should be able to make somehow. This is where my maths falls to fucking shreds. So we've got a 10. Well, 10 and a 6. So let's do 16. Uh, 10 and a 06. And then we could do it. Yeah, let's try that. How's it getting on? What have you lost? Oh, a pedometer. Yeah. Like that. I'm not sure. Take that down to the yard description. Oh, is it good for her? Is it? The whistle. The whistle back. What's it good for? Is it for her being a season and stuff? Immune system. Oh, immune system. That's good. Yeah. Right, back to it. Right, oh, where are we? Um, so this one I think might be in spec, so I can just get about just about get a point one eight in there, and that drags quite nicely. So we're going to have that one down as point one eight. So that one's well in spec. That's odd, that isn't it? Because you know how bad they are. But we'll climb that down zero point one eight. And we'll check them all again in a minute, just in case. Uh, and then the exhaust side for number one. This is where clearance becomes annoying. Hmm, that's odd. I need to go around the other side and have a look. But bear with me, sorry for knocking the camera about. I need to go and have a look at this. I think that will be stuck open.
can't get a point one eight in there. And I'm starting to see a pattern here sometimes. So we'll get there with a point one eight we can't get into in that side. So what we've got in instead. Uh we're supposed to be point one five. Let's go to the smallest point one five. Go from there. Can't get one five down, so we'll keep going smaller. This is just a process now, just do this over and over again. Measure, check, measure, check. So let's go really small, let's go 0.13. Can't get one three in there. Just so fiddly and greasy over there in all of this. Anything in there? Really fucking tight. Let's go point zero five. See that'll go in. Point zero four now. It's the thinnest one I've got. Fuck. Right. So what I've done there is just turn the engine over again, just to have the cams put in the opposite direction, just to give us a bit more ease of getting these uh, things in, because that wasn't reading right to me. So if you turn them over again, this time you've got the lobes facing the outside of the engine, you've got a bit more clearance to get your feeder gauge in. So that goes in 0.13. So I was obviously just not doing it. Something was, you know, if it doesn't feel right, zero clearance just doesn't happen really. If you're not, you're checking them regularly. So you get to zero clearance, or you think you've got zero clearance, you're, you're not wrong. So 0.25 won't go in. So we know it's not off spec completely. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to be clever really. But best just to turn the engine over each time again. So either on your intake or exhaust stroke, whichever one it's going to be. So just your cam lobes are out of the way. Otherwise, you're just sort of fighting yourself. So let's try 0.18, see if that'll go in. A bit tight, that 0.18. So let's try... one down yeah point one five that is right so that's point one five let's write that down before I forget so exhaust on one is point one five oh just gonna check that intake again just to just a peace of mind. Now I've turned the engine over again. Yeah, 
point one eight goes in. So that's what point one five. Five. So, so at the moment we've had, so that's we've checked four valves out of eight, and come up with some odd numbers. But that's how it goes. I'm going to just do the rest of them, uh, and then we'll go to the back to the bench, and I'll show you what. Yeah, and then we'll do the next section. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop here for now. I'll measure the other four valves, but it's very simple. Basically, you just get your lobes to the position where you can get your feeler gauges in between the lobes. And the buckets or followers, I'm going to call them. Work from the biggest all the way, you know, start what you want. I mean, you can start in the middle of the range, but you've just got to start, choose a starting shim. And you work backwards and forwards. And like I said, what you want is that ever so slight drag across the whole, you know, when you pull it out, that light drag as if it's just being held between thumb and forefinger, you know, not being forced in, just that light drag. And that will give you your measurement. You just go through the whole motor like that, um, valve by valve, until you get all your um, clearances. Simple as that, really. Right, I'll uh, catch up with you back at the bench in a minute. Ba -dum, bum, bum. Windy big, windy big, oh, windy, windy, windy.